Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today the projects continue here at the Proven Winners Signature Garden. In fact, uh, we just got finished with the perennials. So if you missed that video, check that out. That is where we installed all of the stunning perennials into the formal area of the Signature Garden. Today what we're going to work on right now is this lovely space behind me. This is a flower bed right alongside the creek. Like the creek is just right there. The signature garden here at Creekside Nursery is not only within the confines of like the formal garden as we call it, because it has very nice strong hard lines, but also all of the surrounding beds of the formal garden. This is the first one that we are starting on. Construction is continuing. Uh, Andrew has been working his little heart out getting the uh, hardscape around the fountain. So he's going to finish that today. We've got a couple of more little projects, but what we're going to focus on as a team is really getting this um, flower bed installed, planted, and then good to go so that those roots can get nice and happy because today actually i believe is the last day of november and it is a great time to plant here in north carolina we are a zone 8a and we can get these plants in the ground now then all winter they will have plenty of time to get their roots established get nice and strong and healthy root system so that way when the summer heat hits they have no problem now this space that we're working in um, is an interesting area in the fact of it is right along the creek it has much sandier soil than what we traditionally have here in our gardens and that is simply because it is on the creek bank and over you know the however many gazillion years as this creek has been here with flooding and so forth we've got lots of great beautiful topsoil here um, so it is going to look much more sandy when we're auging our holes this space also in the summertime because I'm more concerned about my summer sun than my winter sun. In the summertime, of course, all of these trees are completely leafed out. There are tons of tulip poplars in here and they have massive canopies on them. This will get beautiful shade in the morning. It does not start to get sun on it until probably mid to late morning, but it gets all the intense hot afternoon sun because the sun will set right over here over my left shoulder and just shines on this bed, very much like what it is doing right now in the winter. So this will get intense hot afternoon sun. That is why we're also going to be putting some really heat loving shrubs here. So we have got Laura Petalums, we have got gardenias, we have got uh, Indian hawthorns, we've got roses of Sharon, we have of course the ginkgo tree that was here. All sorts of panicle hydrangeas. All of these can handle the heat and humidity um, that North Carolina throws at it and will be great. So what we're going to do, um, Jerry has already I think shown you some footage where he had uh, the bobcat and was kind of cleaning up this area because we will keep uh, a pathway between the creek bank garden and the formal garden because we do need to get equipment through here um, whether it is you know i don't know whatever it is johnny you know something so we'll have this open and then of course as a pathway for folks to walk on so we'll keep that open but you can see with that white line that he painted really giving some curves to the bed right that is a kind of our traditional creekside style of gardening we don't do a lot of hard straight lines that's what was so fun about the formal space within the signature garden is because very very linear flower beds which is not what we are used to working with we like more of the curves slow natural uh, cottage style if you will that is what we're going to do here but it just brings a lot of fun and whimsy to this space so we are going to um, I mean, you saw me started plant placing out some of the city as she goes gardenias we're going to do a nice ribbon of seven of those right there and then we're going to fill in and i think we're going to go ahead and add in probably some perennials as well everybody is going to get biotone massive huge starter with your plants is when you plant your annuals your perennials your trees your shrubs use that biotone starter fertilizer because happy roots equals happy shoots as one of our viewers that said i love that and it really is true you have strong healthy roots you're going to have beautiful happy plants up top so what we're going to do is kind of finalize where everything is going to go um, and we're going to kind of play it by year i believe in this space we're going to be able to use the bobcat 
with the big auger, I think Jerry gives me the nod. We will definitely on the shrubs with the perennials. We may use our power planters. We'll just see how it goes. Um, yeah, it's always an adventure here at Creekside. So once again, let's get to planting. Many hands make light work and we have gotten all of the shrubs into the new bed. Ha! Huh, it feels great to have it done, but man, when you've got a team of what, five people working? Ah, uh, makes the job go so much easier. And of course, having the right equipment with the Bobcat. So what we're gonna do is just gonna walk you through, show you the plants that are in here kind of give you a glimpse of our thought on the design process. And then once we go through and walk, this we're going to come back through and we're going to edge this bed so it has a nice hard defined edge uh, because this is a new flower bed and there's not a defined edge on that so we make sure there's a nice defined edge jackson has gone in the bobcat to go grab the edger and then once that's done we will come back through with our compost um, aged pine bark fine mixture that we have here at the nursery in bulk and we will go ahead and do um, a nice top dressing on that simply because we're running out of land and sea. <laughs> we don't have enough land and sea, and so we've got plenty of that bulk compost with, like I said, the aged pine bark. We'll look at it in a minute, but let's just go through here and look at the design. All right, to give you a bit of a point of reference where we are starting, this is the um, little nook area uh, where we just were here last week, and we planted that evergreen hedge back here that will grow up and give us a gorgeous beautiful backdrop to whatever it is that we decide to do in this space. Remember our sweet Alyssa who is one of our sweet employees who's worked for us for several years. She and her fiance Nick are going to be getting married here in May. This is the area that the ceremony is going to take place. This will be the backdrop. So coming over here, um, and we'll see if everything kind of shows up right here, we've got a nice section of the Jazz Hands Bold Laura Petalums. These will get five to six feet tall. So we've got three here, and then on the other side of the poplar, there is another three. Of course, Laura Petalums are a wonderful southern shrub, love the heat and humidity, extremely low maintenance. You can trim them if you need to, but they have a, a really nice freeform habit to them. Kind of whimsical, not definitely not in a box or a, a, a circle or a ball. Um, really dark, dark foliage on them, and then they do hot pink flowers in late winter, early, early spring. So this will be a nice backdrop to everything that is in front of it, and I love the fact that they will um, complement the poplar trees with their silver bark quite nicely. 
Here in front of the bed, we'll go here, we have got four of the La Vida Moss Indian Hawthorns. These are in the signature garden, and so this kind of echoes and brings that back to over here. These will only get to be one to two feet tall, but three to four wide. Beautiful pink flowers in the spring, and then again in the summer through the fall. We have got the Pinky Winky Prime Pinnacle Hydrangea right here. Yes, she looks rough. That's all right. It was 19 degrees the other night, and all that foliage is dying, and she is going dormant. Pinky Winky Prime will be six to nine feet tall. So imagine Indian Hawthorns are low and wide, the hydrangea six to nine feet tall and as a panicle we get blooms every single year um, it will we'll see I've, I've never done a pinky winky before but we thought we would try this pinky winky prime it'll be fun to see how it goes from white to pink then we have um, like i said here are those three other laura petalums so you can see design wise you've got three over here and you've got three over here. They don't have to be all grouped right there together, um, but they do echo and will be really, really pretty with that holly tree that is behind us. Now, because I do love gardenias, um, in the signature garden, in the formal area, we have Pillow Talk, which is a nice, short, compact gardenia. Here, we have seven, yep seven of the steady as she goes so it goes all the way down there steady as she goes it too is a double gardenia flower which i'm a gardenia snob i love the double bloom as opposed to a single bloom classic gardenia fragrance to it but these can get nice some size on them so they'll get to be about a four i want to say four to five tall four to seven wide somewhere in that area so that's why we didn't put them within the confines of the um, formal garden as they were just going to be too big so we brought them over here being in front of the laurel petalums will just be beautiful it will be stunning and then of course this is our princeton century um, ginkgo that is a male ginkgo so it was ginkgos are slow it's a slow grower um, but it will give us really fun fall color and then texture as well here in the front, we've got Perfecto Mundos, the double pinks, azaleas. We've got three of those. They too are in the, the formal signature garden, bringing that back over. They're going to be about that three to four foot tall and wide. Then we're coming back in. So this is the rest of the gardenias right here. So these are the steady as she goes gardenias. Then we start with some roses of Sharon. We've got Rose of Sharon, um, chiffon and magenta. So we've got a chiffon right here. Roses of Sharon, um, these chiffons will get to be like eight to 12 feet tall. And I wanna say it was like four to six wide. So think very columnar upright habit on them. Gorgeous flowers. We have the pale pink of the chiffon and then the magenta of course is gonna be like a hot, hot pink. So there's three chiffons and there's two magentas and they're down a little bit further, um, down closer to the bed. Um, now, we have three right here um, in this little swoosh right here. We've got three of the soft serve chemerciferous. I think I came in, I need to go back and look at my tag right quick. Um, obviously going to be a beautiful, nice, big um, false cypress. And so they're going to be nice, evergreen, kind of that classic Christmas tree look to them. Six to ten tall and five to six wide really great interest year round the birds are going to love it because they get to hang out in here um, and it just takes on that natural pyramidal shape so we're not going to have to prune it so there you go on that we love not pruning but these three uh, they have done really well for me even though there is only four to eight i have um, a couple of them um, that they our friends at spring meadows sent me and i have one in a pot that is in full hot, hot, hot sun in a container, and it is like growing like a weed, which is a really good thing. Um, so I've been really impressed with those. That's why we went ahead and put them in because I knew. Woo! Did y'all hear that? Uh -uh. <laughs> I feel like we've been shot. Uh, Jerry's uh, trying to start the bed edge, or it kind of had a little rough start. It's just the it's just the bed edger. You know, it keeps you on your toes around here, my friends. Uh, so you'll see him run the bed edger, hopefully, here in just a second as I walk through. 
All right, so as we continue on down, down the path, you will see that there are some sticks back here. Those are the rest of the Roses of Sharon. So it starts with uh, the magenta chiffon, magenta chiffon. So uh, kind of just different shades of pink through there. Coming back on down, we have got more Laura Pedalums. These are again, the bolds. So we've got a group of three here. So we've got three groups of three um, and ties that whole bed in there together. So we've got three of those. And then I thought it'd be really fun to bring back the Sunjoy Citrus Barberries. Bright, bright um, foliage on them. How gorgeous are they gonna be in front of the Laura Pedalums? We've got five right through here. They're gonna be like a two by three, two to three by two to three, right? So a nice shape to them. They are deciduous, which is fine. Uh, and they will do really, really nice there, but they need that hot full sun to get that gorgeous color. And then we're gonna let Jerry get started. And then we're gonna come down there and look at that section down there. Today's project is complete. The bed along the creek bank has been planted and then we also created a uh, new bed here on the very back side of the signature garden. Um, truth be told, you know, we're all about uh, successes and messes and just being honest around here. I'm not really sure what footage we have of this project because to be honest, we're tired and everything started to seem to kind of go wrong. The camera battery completely died. The uh, drone, Jerry was landing it, and because the trees don't have any leaves on them, the drone did not see the tree. And so we had a little bit of a crash. Everything's fine, it just broke off one propeller. He can replace it. Um, the bed edger decided not to work, so he had to edge it by hand. It was just kind of one of those afternoons where it's just like, oh my goodness, what else can go wrong? But you don't ask that because the Lord will show you what else can go wrong. So we just, we just roll with the punches. And so now just forgive me if we did not document a step, we're just going to go back through and kind of overview everything that happened um, so and show you the final look so that you can see. And then you're going to imagine in your mind's eye how some of this stuff went if it's not on camera. All right, there's grace and gardening, my friends. This bed looks really nice. The whole area just looks amazing. This bed um, really depends on where you are as to how deep it is. It is quite deep here from the poplar tree out. I would say that's probably close to like 20 feet or so, but just everything is in. Everybody is planted, everybody has biotone, come back through with a nice layer of the compost uh, pine bark fines mulch. We, this is a bulk compost that we get our, one of our suppliers to have and make for us. It is 60% compost and 40% pine bark. So right here you can see where we have that aged pine bark um, and then of course the mulch is mixed in as well. It is great. The <laughs> Brenna joined us. Um, the plants absolutely love it. This is what we used at the berm and so it held really well. We even when we had rain, it, I don't know that it's German Shepherd proof. Not a lot of things are German Shepherd proof. Uh, she's been in the house all day because the nursery has been opened and so she's she's a little frisky right now. Come on, B, out. Thank you. Um, so, but this 
compost mulch mixture that we use that we top dress kind of does the same thing like it acts as a mulch right it does not wash we have not had issues with it washing however if you were on a really steep bank that may be an issue um so that and then of course it just amends the soil so nicely retains moisture and then suppresses the weeds does great now here on the end i don't think that we talked about i didn't show you this we we talked about it i believe that we were going to do something here so here on the very corner this is going to be kind of quote the entrance let me give you a whole kind of bird's eye view here um, to show you where everything is so this is this far left corner of the signature garden this roadway will stay open will it'll be grass so just know that it will be grass but this is the corner right here that i'm talking about where we kind of edged in this bed um, so what we have here on the front are four of the pugster blue butterfly bushes so we have got four right here they will love it being right here behind it is the sunjoy orange pillar barberry so we'll have two barberries we've got the orange pillar and then the sunjoy um, citrus right over here citrus is going to be like a two by three tall and wide the orange pillar is three to four tall and about like anywhere from two to three wide so it'll definitely be upright and it will be a gorgeous contrast up against the blue butterfly bushes now you're gonna have to take my word for it because you can't see it but back here in the corner there are three of the periwinkle um, baptisia we have some baptisia left over from the interior of the signature garden and i wanted to put them together so this periwinkle i think it's periwinkle popsicle will be beautiful because of course it is an early bloomer right so baptisia early spring bloomer nice really pretty blue flowers on it and it has a completely different habit so it's very upright very vase like and even though it won't be blooming at the same time as the butterfly bushes and so forth you'll have that beautiful foliage and structure for the rest of the season which works really really well now we ended up not putting any more perennials in here other than those three baptisia because I already know that we're gonna be getting quite a load of new perennials from our friends at Walters Gardens in the spring. And so I decided to leave some room here to highlight those new perennials that will be arriving next spring. We can work those in and then the existing perennials we, that we have that were all left over there, we'll get those and put them in other parts of the gardens and so forth. So they're not going to waste, no fret on that. You can see that Jerry is coming through, kind of raking the pathways because sod, as far as we know, is arriving tomorrow. So that will be tomorrow's project. But let me show you what else we did which is really fun we put in and we knew that we were going to but a new um, long skinny bed on the back side of the signature garden let me walk around there and show you because the pathway is a seven foot path that will be grass so we have seven feet on, you can see it nice, see how Jerry, oh, it just looks so nice. So there's a seven foot path right here that will be sod. This is that same seven foot path that is up against the uh, raised beds with the hardscape wall. Over here, we're gonna have that nice long skinny bed right through here. We'll see, I don't know if the sun's working in my favor or not. But we have five of the Glitters and Glows Viburnum. The Glitters and Glows is a, um, they put the male and the female plant together. So we don't have to worry about having one male and one female that's all in the same plant, which is really fun because it will essentially self-pollinate, right? So this plant will be four to five feet tall and wide. I wanted to put it, we thought it would be fun to put it back here because it would give a nice solid kind of backdrop quote hedge to the back of the signature garden. Um, beautiful foliage, beautiful flowers, and then of course the um, small blue berries that are on it. We will be able to definitely for the first several years, if not for a long time, be able to put um, annuals here between it. So we'll have the height of the viburnums and then we will have some 
annuals that will be planted um, along the border here um, and that will be to be determined every year and we can switch them up and just give a whole different viewpoint of this space it's gonna be really really fun but overall my gosh y'all it looks fantastic we, nobody can wait until this side gets in. So it'll be again all hands on deck tomorrow. We'll be laying side and uh, Alyssa and I were talking and we're like, you know, it's kind of like the uh, the lipstick or the earrings of the outfit. It just makes it pop and we're very, very excited to see that. So that will be tomorrow and then we rest. Oh, then we rest. All right. So hopefully... <laughs> Hopefully we were able to document what happened today and uh, it made sense. I, at this point of the day, we've lost all control and I really have no idea. So, uh, Signature Garden continues and yes, it is, a good, it is a good thing. Very good, very good, very good. As always, we so appreciate you. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.